Assalamu alaikum and a very good morning to all my dear students. I hope you all are safe and sound. This is your English instructor Ms. Kainat Kamal and I welcome you all to the lecture 20th of Intermediate English class 2nd year. Dear students, we are still on our unit number 2 with the theme of hope and aspiration. But today we would start reading selection 2.3 that is a poem I Dream a World by Langston Hughes. So before starting our poem, there is a little introduction about the poet. James Mercer Langston Hughes was an American black poet. A versatile writer, social activist, novelist, columnist and playwright who wrote more than 35 books. He moved to New York City as a young man where he made his career. He held posts at the University of Chicago and Atlanta. So, uh, Langston Hughes was born on 50, uh, February 1, 1902 in Joplin, Missouri, United States and was died on May 22, 1967 in Stuyvesant Poly Clinic. So, that was a brief introduction of the poet. Now, moving towards the introduction of the poem. I Dream a World by Langston Hughes explores racial and moral boundaries. Racial and moral boundaries. What does this phrase mean? It means that the boundaries under which we have to work. When we are like exceed the boundaries of racism and morality, Definitely, it somehow we are on positive extremes and on the other hand, we are on negative extremes. Just like, just like the blacks, they when exceeding racial and moral bound, boundaries, they were at the extreme negativities. Because they were discriminating blacks on the, on the basis of color and caste. The persona speaks in a hopeful tone and expresses their personal thoughts and dreams of a world with no boundaries. Now, what does this word persona mean? Persona is basically the aspect of someone's character that is presented to or perceived by others. Or it is a role or character adopted by an author or an actor. Now, in this poem, persona refers to the author, the poet, Langston Hughes. What does he want to say? So, he is, throughout his poem, he is hopeful. His tone is hopeful and he expresses his personal thoughts and dream of a world where there would be no boundaries. Everybody would be free to go wherever they want to, everybody would be free to do whatever they want to. So, the context of the poem before going into the stanzas, the overall context of the poem is, basically in this poem, the poet Langston Hughes has presented an ideal concept of human life on this earth. Like what sort of conduct what sort of behavior, what sort of attitude a human has to adopt an ideal um, uh, attitude or ideal conduct of behavior, I would, I would say. What ideal conduct of behavior a human should adopt in order to stay on this earth where everyone enjoys every facility of life? He means to say that where on this world everybody is equal, everyone enjoys the same basic human rights and privileges. And uh, the poet, he wishes to have a quarrel free world. A world where there would be peace everywhere. 
He wishes to have a peaceful world where no one hates with others and where no concept of greed would prevail. Definitely, the life on earth like should exactly resemble the life of heaven it should be uh, there should be no concept of greed no concept of discrimination no concept of snubbing the rights the basic human rights of the people living around and there should be peace and goodwill everywhere so this is basically the whole concept the whole context of the poem that uh, um, um, Langston Hughes he wanted to promote through his sh uh, through his short poem with the title I dream a world okay dear girls now starting with um, the first stanza I dream a world where man no other man will scorn where love will bless the earth and peace its paths adorn. So, this poem begins with the phrase, I dream a world, which clearly makes it like which, which, which makes it clear that the poet is in hope, hope for something better. And in rest of the poem, he will describe his dream. In first stanza, he basically only showed his hope for something better. Scorn means a feeling and expression of contempt or disdain for something or somebody. Uh, derision we can say, disdain we can say, contempt we can say, uh, the feeling or the expression of contempt or disdain for somebody or for something. At dawn means like uh, making something more beautiful or something more attractive. Now, what does this, po this, this poet wants to say in first stanza? He says that he dreams of a world where no man will ever tease or discriminate against other men. The other men are no other but the blacks. He is referred because he himself was a black and definitely he was a black poet. So he, when he said there should not, uh, there, there, should, uh, there should not be any discrimination, there, like people should not tease one another on the basis of um, any caste and any color. So he was basically referring to directly to blacks. They will be treated like whites. In such a world, there will be love and peace everywhere, which will make it more beautiful. The love here is the love for blacks and the peace is the eradication of discrimination. In this stanza, poet expresses his desire for freedom from discrimination, love and peace. So basically in these lines, the poet dreams of an ideal world. He presents before us an ideal world. He has a humanistic attitude towards life and uh, he basically dreams of a world where no one has developed deep hatred for anyone. Scorn means hatred and where there is a rule of love and uh, uh, he, 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 he wishes for this world, for this earth, peace where there are no calls, where there are no wars, no killings. The people should have the feelings of love and sympathy for others. And he likes to live in a society where there is peace and security of life and property. Because he himself was the sufferer. Sufferer in the sense, he was black and he suffered from the hands of whites. And he likes to live in a society where human rights are not violated ruthlessly and where people should behave like real human beings and not like wild animals. So that is the reason he says, I dream a world where man, no other man will scorn, where there would be no hatred, where love will bless the earth, where love will prevail everywhere, where love will rule the world and peace its path a dawn. What does this line mean? It means that he likes to live in a society where peace and
and security of life and property prevails like where peace like beautifully uh, makes its way pictures and prints uh like adorned his jaise hum kehte na pictures and prints adorned his wall adorned means ma- uh, like made beautiful pictures and uh, 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 prints made his wall beautiful so, so same is the case here with the poet he wants to say that peace adorn its path like with the peace our paths would be adorned our paths would, would be beautiful okay I hope it's clear to you. Now moving towards the next stanza, that is stanza number two. I dream a world where all will know sweet freedom's way, where greed no longer saps the soul, nor avarice blight our day. Now, what does this word saps mean? Sap is a uh, like. something that is gradually weakening or destroying especially a person's strength or power when he says like it, the, uh, again he begins this second stanza with the same phrase i dream a world the poet says that he desires a world where everybody again he repeats specially blacks will enjoy the freedom the freedom of speech the freedom to roam anywhere there will be no greed everybody will lend a helping hand there will be no disease of materialistic desires when he says i dream a world where all will know sweet freedom's way where there will be freedom for everyone living in this on this earth where greed no longer saps the soul where greed no longer weakens or destroy a person's strength a person's power where greed will no longer weaken the souls of humans nor avarice blight a day avarice means extreme greed for wealth or material gain uh, uh, cupidity we can say greed we can say um acquisitiveness we can say so um in these lines the poet basically describes his dream vision and envisions this world as a global village when people living in different nations different races and different religions shall live like brothers with no with with one another and he dreams of, 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 he, he dreams of a world where all men are free they are free they, they have freedom of speech they have freedom to ro- roam anywhere they have freedom to go wherever they want to and he dreams a world where everyone enjoys freedom of expression action and thought the poet dreams of a world where greed will not badly destroy the souls gradually you can see um, in in your society too that we humans we uh, we, we are becoming one another's enemies because this greed has so gradually destroyed it it sapped our souls and that is the reason the poet thinks of a world where people do not have extreme desire for wealth this avarice because greed is a curse and fatal for the well-being of the people when you would be having greed jealousy for your own brother for your own sister definitely this society would destroy this desire of having more and more wealth has spoiled the life of many people in this in, in in the past so is doing in the present and if you could see as a matter of fact wealth is the root cause of all evils in the world and that is the reason the poet dreams of a world which is fully free from all social evils this greed is basically a social evil this 
slavery is basically a social evil so that is the reason he says i dream of a world where all will know sweet freedom's way where especially he, he talks about the blacks where blacks should know the freedom the way of freedom where greed no longer weakens the souls where extreme uh, extreme uh, greed where um, extreme desire for wealth should not destroy should not destroy the well-being of the people so he desires of a world which is fully free from all the social evils so i hope these two stanzas are clear to you now we are moving towards stanza number 3 so in third stanza the poet says that a world i dream where black or white whatever race you be will share the bounties of the earth and every man is free bounties um bounties means uh, a sum paid for um killing or capturing a person or animal But simply you can say it is a reward a prize an award um recompense uh, re um remuneration or commission simply it is an award and reward so in third stanza the poet for the first time uses the word black according to him he wants a world where everybody be it white or black will have access to the resources without any discrimination and there will be complete freedom in doing that so in these lines the poet presented before us again an ideal world he visualizes a world which is free from discrimination on the basis of color and race so for the first time in his poem he used blacks and whites he says where the people of the world lead a free life and where all the people share the natural resources of the world so he says a world i dream where black or white whatever race you be from uh, like whatever caste from whatever race whatever creed whatever tribe you belong belong to we all should share the same bounties of the earth reward award of the earth and every man is free he basically um talking about the dream where there is no craze to conquer or capture others as in the past one nation or country used to attack another nation to make them slaves but in the ideal world of the poet himself there there should be no slavery and aggression all the people will be considered equal and free in the ideal world of the poet this is basically the ideal world of the poet what sort of world he wants this this world to be the whites will not hate with blacks if these things are not there then of course peace will prevail in that world in this world and definitely everyone will be free and they will enjoy equal rights so because he himself was the sufferer so that is the reason he was like uh, in 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 a position to say that like uh, people should people should be free they should not be treated as um as something which is um uh, like uh, which is the symbol of hatred which is the symbol of um uh, like discrimination they should not be treated as slaves like whatever race you belong to whatever caste tribe you belong to we all should be equal we all should share the same reward the same price of the uh, of the earth because in the eyes of the poet we all are equal we all share the same bounties of the earth and we all are free okay uh, now moving towards the next stanza that is the last stanza of the poem 
and the poet says where wretchedness will hang its head and joy like pearl attends the needs of all mankind of such i dream my world in the final stanza he says that in such a world there will be no misery where wretchedness will hang its head and everybody will have access to joy so in the last stanza and in these lines the poet um has presented the vision of an ideal world and the envision of a world where there will be no concept of injustice and the people will be prosperous and happy uh, the needs of the people will easily be filled there will be no ugly things such as poverty and nursery poverty is the mother of all social evils so he says that uh, if there uh, there is no poverty there will be no cruelty or injustice joy peace and happiness will prevail over the human souls the people will enjoy the resources of the world equally no one has to beg borrow or steal because if you could see my dear ladies uh poverty is the root cause of all social evil uh whosoever has said this uh, very rightly he or she has said if you could see if there is poverty definitely there would be begging there would be borrowing there would be stealing there would be injustice there would be cruelty and when there is no poverty people would be like okay people would be definitely enjoying joy peace and happiness in their world consequently um, evil ways of living could come to an end when there would be no poverty so that is the reason he said where wretchedness will hang its head wretchedness means a uh, miserableness uh, misery sufferings ill being so when there when it would be like it would hang its head mean it when it would be uh, it would end joy like pearl attend the needs of all mankind when all the needs of mankind would be fulfilled definitely joy happiness and uh, peace would prevail so that world that is my dream the poet say that the end of such i dream this is my dream this world is basically my dream and i dream for such a world the poet is basically here only talking about the poverty by saying that this that i dream a world where there is no poverty no shortage of bread and butter where happiness prosperity freedom and joy will serve all mankind definitely then there would be no uh, no inferiority complex and even not superiority one where joy and happiness would prevail and where joy and happiness would spread like fragrance where the needs of all mankind will be fulfilled and no one has to steal and no one has to borrow so this was basically um the poet's dream world the poet's ideal world uh the poet's utopia we can say where he wants to live so dear girls that was all uh, about the poem uh, stanza and its explanation now we are moving towards the analysis of the poem so in this poem uh, the poet uh, like first let me talk about the rhyme scheme i dream a world by langston hughes as yes it explores racial and moral boundaries and the author speaks in a hopeful tone and expresses their personal thoughts and dreams of a world where there are no boundaries so the use of the a b c b rhyming scheme allows the audience to easily follow the poem because of the rhythmic flow so if you could uh, uh, look um, if you could look into your stanza the rhyme scheme of the stanza is a b c b man a scorn b adorn c a b c b so man 
A. Scorn B. Earth C. Adorn A. Uh, sorry, B. A. B. C. B. So, this basically provides to the audience a rhythmic flow. Looking into second stanza, all A, V, B, Soul, C, Day, B, V, Day, B, B, A, B, C, B. Uh, I hope you all are um, clear what this rhyme scheme is because definitely you have studied it in your first year as well. Okay, looking into stanza 3, white A, B, B, earth C, free B, B, free B, free B, B, A, B, C, B. Stanza 4 and the last one is head A, pearl B, mankind C, world D, pearl world, pearl world, A, B, C, B. So, it provides to the readers a rhythmic flow. Uh, the author is basically um, uh, presenting uh, before us his dream of a world where there is no racial boundaries. If they are, these are apparent and we all live in harmony and freedom. The author's optimistic tone in the verses conveys the fact that the reality of racial prejudice in society interferes with such a dream. Definitely, when they like the reality of our society is different. We have racial prejudice in our society, we have injustice, we have almost all the social evils prevailing in our society so these are basically interfering the dream of the author and this use of rhyme scheme a b c b allows the audience to easily follow the poem because of the rhythmic flow so um next uh, uh, mm, the poet langston hughes he uses a uh, uh, personification at two points um, Langston uses personification to express the moral opinion of greediness when he says where greed no longer saps the soul. The use of personification here it conveys how there is a greater meaning to the line. As greed weakens one's spirit and character this conveys basically a moral boundary. Knowing that Greediness is not a fine quality in person. Giving a uh, an inanimate, giving an animate object quality of inanimate, like something that is that is that that is the part of one's spirit and one's character. Greed is basically weakening the soul, the spirit, the strength, the power of a character. This conveys a moral boundary boundary is that that you should behave under this this uh, 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 i would say under this this um, uh, territory the territory of peace the territory of brotherhood and greediness is is, is not uh, a fine quality in a person and we all possess this quality that has negative aspects on our life and the lives of others as well. Okay, personification was used again in this poem to create a more vivid description of an inanimate object. When he says, where wretchedness will hang its head. This is basically an example of personification as it is giving an abstract noun Wretchedness, a human quality, hanging its head. I hope you all are following me. Wretchedness is an abstract noun which could not be seen. It could only be sensed. Hatred. It has been given a human quality like hanging its head. The use of personification enhances our mind 
to connect ideas and images and to think deeper of the true meaning. If you could analyze this very uh, sentence, you would see, you would get this deeper thinking, this deeper idea, the true meaning of this line and the connection between the ideas, the connection between the images that wretchedness will hang its head. Definitely, uh, this, this hatred would engulf this society. Okay, uh, next and the last thing that um, Langston used in his poem is repetition to make a clear, strong statement throughout. And that is, I dream a world where... So uh, the use of repetition creates a deeper understanding of the uh, of the author's perspective of the perfect world, and it also emphasizes the meaning of the name of the poem "I Dream a World." When he repeatedly uh, use uh, uses one phrase, uh, it means that this phrase has some strong and powerful meaning, and this phrase basically wants to convey some. Uh, uh, convey uh, an important message to us and that message was the dream of a world where there would be like blah 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 by the author so um, dear students that was all about the poem we have discussed about the poet the introduction of the poet the introduction of the poem then we have uh, uh, look into the like we had look into the stanzas uh, explanation of the lines and at the end, uh, end we have done the analysis of the poem so that is all for today and about the poem and if you have any question if you have any query you are most welcome to our whatsapp group and please don't forget to do your home task that is uh, the paraphrasing and the explanation of the lines it would be easy easier for you to do it because uh, we have already done the explanation of the lines and uh, I would expect you to do the paraphrasing and then the explanation of the following stanzas. So, um, with the hope of uh, your safe uh, health and uh, uh, your um, good life, uh, I end today's lecture. And inshallah, I would see you in our next lecture with our next uh, unit, unit 3. And till then... Take care of yourself. Allah Hafiz.